Let now be the words of my mouth and the thoughts and meditations of our hearts be ever acceptable in your sight, O God, our strength and our deliverer. Amen. Now, the parable of the talents, or another of the parables of the ta of talents. I previously calculated with you what a talent, a measure of money, by weight either gold or silver, might come to. And I think if I'm correct, um, that amount came to something like 40 million rand, that's 34 kilograms of gold. Uh, that's what its value might be. Another way a talent is described by scholars, the way uh, the value of a talent back then, was that a talent was the equivalent of 20 years worth of wages. Now that's a long time. Obviously, if you divide 40 million uh, by 20 years, you get to 2 million. Oh, everybody wishes that they end 20 million. Um, but um, measures were different. But 20 worth, 20 years worth of wages. A mind-blowing amount. In today's parable, we are told that a master goes away on a journey and entrusts his property to his slaves or three servants. He entrusts to one, if we use a measure of time, 100 years worth of wages, as to the first five talents. And to the second, he entrusts 40 years worth of wages. And to the third, 20 years worth of wages. So even one with one talent actually is entrusted with property that is humongous. Mind blowing. Now I'm not sure what I would do with that much money or worth of property given to me. What would you do with it? That's a lot of responsibility. And so he gives them charge over his property in measures of 10, 40, and 20 years worth of wages according to their ability. Now that's how we know that the way we think about talent uh, today is different from what the Bible means when it says talent. Because here they are given talents, the amount of property according to what we would call talents, their abilities and skills. Two different things and we'll come back to that and we'll see the relevance of that as we move on. And so he gives them talents on top of their ability as servants. So, property, ability to serve. Now this parable is not really about money. No, it's not. Like all parables, it's about the kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven. It's about the kingdom that God gives to us, both as individuals and collectively. Now, the kingdom of God is a stuff of which saints are made. If we say somebody is saved, it's because we've seen something of the kingdom of God, as I said last Sunday. And what is the point of the kingdom of God? The point of the kingdom of God is to make an impact in this world, all that as it might be. Thy kingdom come. And once you say that, you are asking to be something of a saint. With that, to make an impact in the world. So, to the first servant, they were given this much saintliness, if you want to put it that way. Whether they put it into practice is a different thing. They were given this much saintliness to make, if you use your imagination, to make an impact that might last a hundred years. Does that make sense? And given an opportunity to make an impact that is so big. To the second, they are given an opportunity to make an impact that might be felt 40 years after. To the last, maybe to make an impact that might last 20 years, each according to their ability. Use your ability, use your creativity, make an impact. Now the master comes back and the question is, what did you do? with the amount of heaven, the amount of opportunity to make an impact that I left you with, the amount of sentiments that I've given to you, free of charge, gratis. What have you done with it? The first comes back and says, well, you've given me an opportunity to make an impact that might last 100 years. Look, I 
use what abilities he gave me, and it looks like that impact is even bigger, 200 years. I'm just using numbers here to give an idea of how seriously Jesus takes us, end of them. And then the master says, oh, well done, good and faithful servant. And then the second one comes, 40 years you've given me. I've made 40 more, so eight years worth of impact. And the third one comes and says, I did nothing with it. Now, a number of things can be deduced, and I want us to look at this third servant. Basically, what the servant did was, he received an opportunity to make an impact and neglected the abilities that God has also given to him to make that impact. That's number one. Number two, he didn't want to take a risk with this opportunity. Now, what would that mean? We talk about Christianity being about love, don't we? Now, one of the things that love has to do with is taking a risk. To love your neighbor is risky. Why? Because Jesus also said, love your enemy. The two may sound like two different statements, but guess what? And I guess you love me. Most often, your neighbor and your enemy are the same person. Am I right? Chances are that if you've got an enemy, they've been close enough. So love your neighbor and love your enemy. Actually, the same commandment. And when you're given a measure of sinfulness, then you're challenged to take this thing and see if it will work. This love thing to somebody who might even want to crucify you. The last one doesn't want to ch take a chance with this love, this kingdom thing. He holds his ability, digs a hole, and buries this talent that he was given. This 20 years opportunity of making an impact. He hides his saintliness. Like the one who lights a candle and keeps, uh, then covers it with a bushel. Now, said this that the point of the kingdom of heaven is to make an impact. And each one of us are given a measure of that kingdom. An impact of love, of joy, of peace, of forgiveness, of justice, of patience, of kindness, of goodness, of faithfulness, of gentleness, and of self-control. The question is, are we going to also engage in this? The abilities, the creativity that God gives us to love the only way God allows me, has given me the ability to love. To share and make joy make peace, patience, to be forgiven. Are we using what God has given us? This valuable thing called the kingdom of God. We are saints. Are we using our saintliness? Are we multiplying what God has given to us? Or when God comes back, he'll find us ready to give his kingdom back to him. Are we using the same thing that's given to us according to the measure of our ability?